Good morning. It's good to be here today. Good morning, everybody watching out there. We had a wonderful uh, Bible study this morning. We uh, finished up on the seven sacraments of the church. And we ended up in marriage today, which I thought was a good place to end anyways. Today's the first Sunday of Advent, hence we're wearing purple now for the season of Advent. And it's the time we look forward to celebrating the birth of Christ. And it's also a time we look forward to the return of Christ as our King and our Savior. So you'll hear both of those parts of it in this morning's uh, sermon. So I'm glad you're here. Let's begin our, our Holy Mass today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. My brothers and my sisters, let us so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries by confessing our sins to God and to one another. Most merciful Father, I confess that I have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what I have done and by what I have failed to do. I have not loved you with my whole heart, I have not loved my neighbor as myself. I am truly sorry, and I humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on me and forgive me. And in your compassion, renew me with your Spirit, so that cleansed of my sins and strengthened for your service, I may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God forgive us all of our sins, strengthen our faith in him, and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, 
We give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our first reading today comes from the Old Testament book of Isaiah, the sixth chapter. The prophet writes, Surely Yahweh, you are still our father. Even if Abraham and Jacob would disown us, Lord, you would still be our father. You are our redeemer from ages past. Lord, that's why you have allowed us to turn from your path. Or why have you allowed us to turn from your path? Why have you given us stubborn hearts so we no longer fear you? Return and help us, for we are your servants, the tribes that are your special possession. Oh, that today you would burst from the heavens and come down. How the mountains would quake in your presence. When you came down long ago, you did awesome deeds beyond our highest expectations. And oh, how the mountains quaked. For since the world began, no ear has heard, and no eye has seen a God like you, who works for those who wait for him. You welcome those who gladly do good, who follow godly ways. But you have been very angry with us, for we are not godly. We are constant sinners. How can people like us be saved? We are all infected with them, pure and impure with sin. When we display our righteous deeds, they are like nothing but filthy rags. Like autumn leaves, we wither and fall, and our sin wipes or sweep us clean or sweep us away like the wind. Yet no one calls on your name or pleads with you for your mercy. Therefore, you have turned away from us and turned us over to our sins. And yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you the potter. We are the formed by your hand. Don't be so angry with us, Lord. Please don't remember our sins forever. Look at us, we pray, and see that we are all your people. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is portions of Psalm 80. Please listen, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph's descendants like a flock, O God enthroned above the cherubim, show us your mercy and your mighty power. Come rescue us. Come back, we beg you, O God of heaven's armies, look down from heaven and see our plight. Take care of this grapevine that you yourself have planted, this son you have raised for yourself. Strengthen the man you love the son of your choice, then we will never abandon you again. Revive us so we can call on your name once more. Our second reading for this morning is from the book of 1 Corinthians, the first chapter. Beloved, may God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. I always thank my God for you, and for the gracious gifts he has given you, now that you belong to Christ Jesus. Through him, God has enriched your church in every way, with all your eloquent words and all your knowledge. This confirms that I told you about Christ is true. Now what you have, now you have every spiritual gift you need as you eagerly wait for the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you strong in the end, so that you will be free from all blame on the day when our Lord Jesus Christ returns. God will do this, for he is faithful to do what he says, and he has invited us into partnership with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God.
Hallelujah. Show us your unfailing love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Be on guard. Stay alert. The coming of the Son of Man can be illustrated by the story of a man going on a long trip. When he left home, he gave each of his slaves instructions about the work they were to do, and he told the gatekeeper to watch for his return. You too must keep watch, for you don't know when the master of the household will return, in the evening, at midnight, before dawn, or at daybreak. Don't let him find you sleeping when he arrives without any warning. I say to you, and what I say to everyone, Watch for him. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. God is good, amen? Amen, all the time. I'd like to read for you this morning for today's homily one verse from the gospel reading from Mark the 13th chapter. Mark the 13th chapter and that would be verse 33. Jesus says these words. He said, take heed, watch and pray. For you do not know when the time is going to come. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Almighty and Eternal God, for this blessing of another new day. Thank you, Lord, for this beginning of the season of Advent that you have given to your church as a gift. That for us who believe in you, O Lord, this is the new year, the beginning of the new year. Because for us, our life centers around you and not around January 1st to December 31st. We have a new year given to us in Christ and we thank you for that. May we live this year according to your will, according to your ways. May we see your desire for us and surrender ourselves to you, O Lord, and not our own desires and passions like the rest of the world does. But help us live for you. And look forward to the birth and celebrating your birth, O Lord. And look forward to your glorious return. Lord, we pray all these things in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Again, verse 33 of Mark chapter 13. Jesus says, Take heed, watch and pray, for you do not know when the time is. One of the things Jesus said in this gospel reading today, which I'd like to make for the title of today's message, is very simply, keep on the alert. In other words, keep your eyes open. Keep watching. On this first Sunday of Advent, the season in the church year that is all about the expectation and anticipation, prayer and watchfulness, it always amazes me how so many people think that the only thing they consider this month, in the month of December, is a season for shopping. You know, it's kind of sad to think that the church or the Christmas season for the world begins on something they decided to call Black Friday. It kind of blows my mind when I think about that. Rather than thinking about that today is the season of Advent. They call it a season for giving. They call it a season for giving. So what do they do? Buy presents to give to someone on Christmas or Christmas Eve and or, or on Christmas Day. And many times these presents are given to people that they won't give the time of day to the rest of the year. As if somehow Christmas giving is what it's all about. I hear people ask, and I was even asked this already, where, where are we having Christmas this year? 
I could never understand that, even as a kid. Where are we having Christmas? As if Christmas all depends on whose house we're eating and drinking at on that particular day. One thing I've come to learn is that this month, and I'm sure you agree with me, Bill, can bring out the ugly and the beautifulness of people. <laughs> it can kind of bring out both. They either get ugly or they get real beautiful. As people run around to spend lots of money on gifts that they don't have, and they worry about how am I going to pay my bills because I spent all this money. And this gets exhausting sometimes even to think about what's going on right now in this shopping season. I just want to kick back and go, I'm tired <laughs> just thinking about it. So what is it that helps us focus and keep track of both mentally and spiritually this month? What keeps us on track? Mentally and spiritually. We have to have an attitude of receiving and an attitude of waiting to receive. We need both. We also have to look at the, uh, we also need to know what it is we are waiting for and who it is we are waiting to receive. Listen, our scripture says in Jesus' words, be on guard, keep alert, because you do not know when the time will come. Well, some might think, well, hold on, Father. Wait a minute, it's December. We all know when Christmas Day is, right? It's December 25th. It's been that way for years. And we know that day is just coming around the corner in like three and a half weeks. It's coming up real fast. And that's all you think about. You miss the point if all you think about is December 25th coming in three and a half weeks. See, we celebrate. We celebrate and anticipate two of the greatest events in history as Christians. We celebrate them. We anticipate them. One of the events has already taken place in Bethlehem about 2,000 years ago. And that's the birth of Christ. One is coming at a time and a place that we're still waiting on that we don't know about. One is the birth of Christ, Jesus the Savior. That already happened. The other thing we think about is the return of Christ, where Jesus comes to be our judge of the living and the dead, and that's still yet to come. You know, we're told in the Gospel in detail about the events of the birth of Jesus. If we look at all these things carefully, in the Gospel of Luke in particular, in Luke chapter 1, the angel Gabriel went to a town in Nazareth, in Galilee, to a young lady by the name of Mary, who was a virgin, and told her, guess what? You're going to become pregnant. The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and you shall be with child. And this child shall be called the Son of of God, and that you would name him Jesus, and his kingdom will have no end. Then the scriptures also tell about us after Jesus was born in Bethlehem, he was born in a stable, and he was laid in a manger, because there's no place else for them to go, and his parents were poor, and they couldn't find an inn for him to stay in. And then after they laid him in the manger, that same night, probably, the shepherds came. And they heard, they came to worship him. They heard the angels proclaim to them, Peace on earth, goodwill towards men, because the Son of God has been born in Bethlehem. And they went there to see the Savior. Then, after a time, we read about how the wise men came from the east to offer gifts to this newborn King Jesus. And they bowed down to worship him. Both Jews, who were the shepherds, and Gentiles, who were the wise men, all came to worship Christ and bring him gifts and pay him homage. This child that was born that day is the son of the living God and the son of man, true God and true man, divine and human, all in one, the Savior of the entire world. And both Jews and Gentiles came to worship him. 
The Bible tells us in John 1, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory of the Father's only begotten Son, full of grace and truth. There's the peace that we have during Advent, knowing that we celebrate the birth of Jesus. I remember some years ago, sitting in someone's living room, and as their children were opening up their Christmas gifts, their teenage daughter, when she was all done, looked at her mom and said, that's it? That's it? <laughs> she had no joy, she had no peace, because it was all wrapped up in presents, and when she didn't get enough, or maybe the ones she wanted, she said, that's it. Now what else about Advent? What else do we anticipate? We celebrate the birth of Christ, but we also anticipate something we almost never think about this time of year, if we even think about it at all. Something most people never even think of, but found in our gospel reading for today, what we need to think about is also the return of Christ. He was once born. He came. He died on the cross after suffering. He was buried, he ascended, he rose again, and he said, I will be coming again. And he said it often in the Gospels about himself. So we also look forward to the return of Christ. We celebrate his birth, we look forward to his return. When Jesus ascended into heaven in Acts, the first chapter, following his resurrection, he told everyone there, he said, I will come again. And so he tells us in the gospel today, be on your guard, be alert, because you do not know when the time will come. And he told the parable in today's gospel reading about a master going on a journey. And he said to his servants, take care of everything that I have until I come back. He never told them when he's going to come back. He might have told him where he's going, we're not sure. But he never said what day, what week, what month, what year, anything. He never said when I'm coming back. But he said, take care of everything that I've given to. And all he said to them when he left was, keep watch. Keep watch. Let me ask you this, friends. Do you live in, a, in anticipation? Of the return of Christ. Yeah, you ever think about that? Do you live in anticipation of the return of Christ? Or are you thinking he hasn't come back yet? It's going to be a long time out there. <laughs> he might come back tonight. We don't know. He might come back before this Mass is finished. We don't know. But that's not a question I ask to put fear or anger in you but a reminder of what is to come and to keep us on track and moving forward and focusing on the right thing. And the assurance that there is more than just this life that we're living right now and we see right here and now. Our life we live now, everybody, is to, to prepare us to live with Christ forever, to prepare us to meet Him, to show us the priority in life is not all the things of this world that we think we need to accumulate, but maybe to get rid of things of this world and our love for them so, so our love for Christ would grow and we can anticipate his return. I love what Paul said in Romans 8. He said, I am convinced, I'm convinced that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory that is to be revealed to us in Christ Jesus. Isn't that amazing? You know, those of us who suffer in this life, and I think we all do to some certain extent, the sufferings we go through, this in, through in this life are nothing compared to knowing Christ Jesus. Because when he comes back, all his worries are gone. All the suffering is gone. You know, we can be so filled during this time of Advent, in these few weeks in December. We can be so filled with anxiety, depression, 
all these different things if we let it take our eyes off of Christ. That's why Advent is a time to look forward, a time to look forward, look past what's here and now, and look forward to the return of Christ as we prepare ourselves to celebrate the birth of Christ and look forward to the coming of Jesus in all of his glory and all of his majesty. And that can set the tone for the rest of the year for us to simply stay alert. My friends, Jesus is coming soon, isn't he? He's coming soon. Despite what people say, despite what we might think, he's coming soon. Prepare to meet him. Because you will see him in person with your eyes. A final thought. The Bible says, We know that when he appears, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he really is. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Father, we thank you, most mighty and merciful God, for this gift of the message you've given us today to anticipate the return of your Son, to expect him to come back any day, to live as though we are ready to let go of the things of this life that we might meet him in all of his glory. Help us remember this during this time of Advent as we celebrate his birth, as we look forward to the celebrations. Those celebrations are good, but we also have to remind ourselves why we do them. It's all about Jesus. We pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. join together in the words of the Nicene Creed that we have on our worship folder. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and of earth and of all things seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all ages, God of God, light of light, true God of true God, begotten, not created, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace of God, for his mercy, for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For peace in our time, for the welfare of the Holy Church, and for all people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the Bishop of Rome, Francis, the Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew, for all patriarchs and bishops, especially our own bishop, Cotter Archbishop, Bernard Abbot General, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may, by their life and doctrine, set forth God's true and living word, and rightly and duly administer his holy sacraments, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
through the intercession of our Holy Father Benedict, bless all monks and nuns, especially the members of our order, that they may lead holy and peaceful lives, seeking only God's glory. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the leaders of all nations and for all who are in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this city and for all cities and communities and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good weather, for the abundance of the fruits of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth the Lord has given us, for the wisdom and will to preserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who travel by land or sea, through the air or in space, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those who in this transitory life are in sorrow, sickness, need, or any other adversity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor, the oppressed, for the unemployed and the homeless, and for those in prison and captivity, and for their families and loved ones, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, for all the dearly departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who do not yet believe and for those who have lost their faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope without suffering or reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Now, at this time, if anyone has a special intention, speak up, and we will pray together. Lord, we just pray for Israel and what's going on there, that you would protect your people and bring peace to Jerusalem. And we pray that this would be a quick ending war, that Hamas would be removed. And we just ask that you would just bless your people, because we're to pray for your people and for the peace of Jerusalem. And we also pray for the Ukraine that that war would end. It's the end of this war. They need to have some peace and, and quiet. Innocent people are being killed. And that's what war is, Lord. The, the rich make money and the poor die. And we just ask that you would just pray for our Christian brothers and sisters who are persecuted throughout the world. That you would just watch over them and their families. And we just ask for a blessing this holiday season as you would bless our New Year, our Christmas. And we know what Christmas leads to the resurrection and Easter and then the second coming of Christ. So we thank you for all that, Lord, that you are so good to us and we are undeserving. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, we lift before you Abby and all the stuff she's going through with her car, her health. We lift before you TJ as well. He lives sometimes in a little bit of confusion. We pray for our families and our loved ones, yes. oh Lord, right now that are struggling and suffering in so many different ways, physically, mentally, and spiritually. Lord, watch over them. Open the doors to the reality of faith, the reality of who you are for each one. And Lord, I thank you that we can be here this morning in this chapel of St. Martin's to pray, to worship, to sing, to receive the holy commandment along with receiving your word in our heart. May you bless this time together, Lord. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord of mercy, that we rejoicing in the fellowship of the Blessed Virgin Mary and our Holy Father Benedict and all the saints may commend ourselves, one another, and all our lives to Christ our Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For these things, and for all the unspoken prayers deep in our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For yours is the majesty, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen.
accept the Holy Father Almighty and eternal God, despite us hosts, which I am worthy servant all to thee, my living and true God. To atone for my countless sins, offenses, and shortcomings, and for all the present, as also for all faithful Christians, both living and dead, that it may avail both me and them unto life everlasting. God who in creating human nature is wonderfully dignified and still more wonderfully deformed. Granted by the mystery of this water and wine, we may be made partakers of his divine nature, who vouchsafed to become a partaker of our nature, namely Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. We offer unto you, O Lord, the chalice of salvation, beseeching your mercy, that it may ascend before your divine majesty as a sweet order for our salvation and for that of the whole world. Accept us, O Lord, in spirit, humility, and contrition of heart, and grant that the sacrifice we offer this day in your sight may be pleasing to you, O Lord God. Come, O Holy Spirit, Almighty, to the eternal God, and bless this sacrifice prepared for the glory of your holy name. Wash my hands among the innocent, O Lord, and so hold your altar, that I may show the voice of thanksgiving and tell of all your wondrous works. Lord, I have loved the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. O oh, shut not up my soul to sinners, nor my life with the bloodthirsty, whose hands is wickedness, and their right hand is full of gifts. But as for me, I will walk innocently, O oh, deliver me, be merciful unto me. My foot stands right. I will praise the Lord in the congregation. And receive a holy trinity, this oblation which you make to you, in memory of the passion, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, and in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Blessed John the Baptist, the Holy Apostles Peter and Paul, the Holy Father Benedict, and all the saints that it may avail to their honor and our salvation, and that they may vouchsafe to intercede for us in heaven, whose memory we celebrate on earth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. And may the Lord accept the sacrifice from our hands to the praise of the Lord, his name, for our good and for the good of all his holy church. Amen. The Lord be with you. Also and with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly meet and just right in our duty that we should always and in all places give thanks to you, O Holy Lord, Father Almighty, eternal God through Christ our Lord, by whom the angels praise your majesty, the dominations adore, the powers tremble before it, the heavens, the heavenly virtues, and blessed seraphim with calm and jubilee glorify it together with whom we beseech you that we may be admitted to join their humble voices, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory in the highest. All glory be to you, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of your tender mercy did give your only Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. Therefore, we humbly pray and beseech you that you would be pleased to accept and bless these gifts, these presents, these holy, unspotted sacrifices, which in the first place we offer you for your holy Catholic Church, to which we ask you to grant peace, as also to preserve, unite, and govern her throughout the world, together with your servants, Francis, the Bishop of Rome, Bartholomew, the Ecumenical Patriarch, 
Cotter Archbishop, Bernard our Abbot General, as well as all bishops, priests, and deacons, and all those who believe and profess the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Be mindful, O Lord, o, of all here present, whose faith and devotion are known to you. We offer for them, or they themselves offer it as sacrifice of praise for themselves, their families and friends, for the redemption of their souls, for the health and salvation they hope for, and for which they now pay their vows to you, the eternal living and true God, communicating with and honoring in the first place the memory of the ever-glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ, as also of the blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, Thaddeus, Benedict, Stephen, Robert, Alberic, and all your saints, at whose intercession grant that we may be always defended by the help of your protection through Christ our Lord. We therefore beseech you, O Lord, graciously to accept this oblation of our servitude, as also of your whole family, and to dispose our days in your peace, to save us from the time of trial and rank us in the number of your elect. Send out your Holy Spirit upon these gifts of bread and wine made by human hands, which oblation to you, O God, vouchsafed in all respects, to bless, approve, ratify, and accept that it may become for us the body and the blood of your most dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. who the day before he suffered took bread into his holy and venerable hands, with his eyes lifted up towards heaven to you, Almighty God, his Father. Giving thanks to you, he blessed, he broke and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. In like manner, after he had supped, taking also the chalice into his holy and venerable hands, giving you thanks, he blessed. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Gift of your blood, O Lord. Given for the supper. Wherefore, O Lord, we, your servants, as also your holy people, calling to mind the blessed passion of the same Christ, your Son, our Lord, his resurrection from the dead and ascension into heaven, offer unto your most excellent majesty of your gifts bestowed upon us, a pure host, a holy host, an unspotted host, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation, upon which vouchsafe to look with a propitious and serene countenance, and to accept them as you were graciously pleased to accept the gifts of your just servant Abel and the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham and that which our high priest Melchizedek offered to you, a holy sacrifice and a spotted victim. We most humbly beseech you, Almighty God, to command these gifts to be carried by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, that as many as shall partake of this most sacred body and blood of your Son this altar may be filled with every heavenly grace and blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Also to us sinners, your servants, confiding in the multitude of your mercies, be pleased to grant some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Peter, Felicity, Perpetual, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and with all your saints into whose company we beseech you to admit us, not in consideration of our merit, but of your gracious pardon, through Christ our Lord. Amen. To whom, O Lord, you always create, sanctify, quicken, bless, and give us all these good things. 
through him, with him, in him. To you, God the Father Almighty, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. I love you too, God. Please give us your holy body and blood. Give it to us for the salvation of our soul. Let us pray. Instructed by your saving precepts and following your divine directions, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, we beseech you, O Lord, from all evils, past, present, and to come. And by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, of the holy apostles, Peter and Paul, of Andrew, our holy father, Benedict, and all the saints. Mercifully grant us peace in our days, that through the assistance of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who with you in the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, world without end. Amen. Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. May this mixture and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ be to us who receive it, effectual to eternal life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world of mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world of mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. O Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Regard not my sins, but the faith of your church. And grant her that peace and unity, which is your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. O Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who according to the will of the Father, as by your death, through the cooperation of the Holy Spirit, given life to the world, deliver us by this your most sacred body and blood from all our iniquities and from all evils, Make us always adhere to your commandments and never suffer us to be separated from you. I will take the bread of heaven and call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I'm not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. What shall I give to the Lord for all the things he has given to me? I will take the chalice of salvation and will call upon the name of the Lord and I shall be saved from my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I'm not worthy to receive you under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Today in the chapel, as we receive the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in both a physical and a spiritual way, my prayer for you today is that you receive him spiritually into your heart and follow him all the days of your life. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Grant the Lord that what we have taken with our own, we may receive with the pure heart, that as a temporal gift it may become to us in eternal life. O Lord, which I have received in your blood, which I have drunk, stay in my heart. Grant that no stain of sin may remain in me, who has been fed with this pure and holy sacrament. Let us pray. O Lord, we have consumed your holy body and blood, let not the fire of hell consume us. Our eyes have touched your holy face, let them see your abundant mercy, O Word of God. We have shared in your holy mysteries, let us join you in your heavenly abode. Count us among the sheep at your right hand, and we shall see your glory forever. O bread of life, we have taken you as nourishment in our journey. May the fires of hell not approach us. Because the aroma of your holy body and blood emanates from us. O Savior of mankind, through your holy baptism, may we join you in your holy mansion of life and peace forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Thanks be to God. May Almighty God bless you and keep you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Oh, holy child of Bethlehem.
He sent to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in. Be born to us today. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings tell. Oh, come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. Amen. And God bless you. Thank you for coming today and joining us. Thanks for being here today, Bill. What a pleasure to be with you again, brother. And all my friends that are watching today, may God truly bless you and keep you in everything you do. Remember the doors here in the chapel are always open. Don't hesitate to message me on, on Facebook and maybe we can get together. God's peace be with you all. Amen.